The message is simple, you belong. And that's the message that we want to pass along to our young people. That's the same message that has guided Boston's transformation over the last decade. There were 56,786 students enrolled in the Boston Public Schools, and every one of them have their own story. About 10 years ago, our dropout rate was nearly 10%, and now it's now only 60% of our BPS grads who are going to college. That was back 10 years ago. After we talked about working to, to bring down the dropout rate, when we started to see that, we started to see these programs working together. And it couldn't have happened at a better time. It specialized in reaching young people who have a high school diploma who aren't taking the next step. Today, they're actually the largest group of opportunity youth in Boston. Together, we opened and connected a connection center for disconnected high school graduates. And many of you can remember cutting the ribbon on that brutally sweltering hot day. And maybe that was a good thing because we haven't had one of those days really since then, so we'll get some good time coming back. But I remember thinking at the time, these kids are in the same exact position I was after high school. I didn't want to be in school. I felt in, in some ways inside of me, I was too embarrassed to say it, I felt that I couldn't do the work. In other ways, I just didn't want to be there because I, I, I didn't have that drive inside of me. But it's important that, that we can take this and make sure that because of this young people, that young people are going to hear the message that you belong. Understand that no re-engagement initiative should stand alone. You can't do it alone. Not one program, not one city, not one mayor, not one elected official, not one superintendent, not one person can do this work on their own. If you want to show opportunity youth that they belong, you need to show them that they belong at every stage, and that that's education, that's career, and that's in their lives. The reason why I'm connected with uh, opportunity youth is really a, a kind of personal one. Um, I was a high school dropout. I dropped out of school when I was 17. It, school was kind of always a struggle for me. I never really liked it. Um, and finally, I turned 17. I felt like I was a man that I can finally just walk away and try to live my, my life as an adult. So I did that. I left school. But when I left school and I actually tried to live as an adult, I learned a lot of lessons. Really learned why school was important. The first thing I learned that school really had, really, it, adulthood had not really much to do with, with age. It more had to do with money. Because without money, you really can't live as an adult. At age 19, I went back to my same school that I dropped out of. Um, I did two more years there, uh, and I graduated at age 21. I had a guidance counselor who told me that I was intelligent and that I was a college student. And prior to that, I didn't really think about going to college. But I, I, I took his word for it, and I went. Uh, I shared my story because in, in my work at the re-engagement center, uh, where, where I'm the manager there, it's all about the story. I tell my story to young people so that they can share their stories. I didn't realize the relevance of school, the importance of school, and so, and so this is sort of, of, of what I do and, and myself and my team, we do every day to sort of share our story and have students share their story and also use my life and our lives as an example to, to kind of make it through. So we did the study that was uh, now able to be done. Uh, the Boston Foundation uh, paid for it. It was done by the Private Industry Council and Northeastern University. And the results were, were uh, devastating. They were able, with precision, thanks to something called the National, Public St uh, National Student Clearinghouse, to determine exactly what happened to every young person who had graduated from the Boston Public School. So it wasn't an estimate or a sample. It was what happened to every kid. And the results were that um, only about between a, a third and 39 percent of those who enrolled in college were obtaining uh, any kind of degree uh, up to seven years after their high school graduation. Success Boston coaches have enabled us to do in collaboration with the community-based organizations is really start those conversations with young people while they're still in high school. I really think that the, our North Star needs to be guided differently. It needs to be about both college, it has to be about career, and it actually has to be about life. Making sure our young people get career experiences um, over a course of their high school time, uh, career, that they are getting internships, they're getting summer jobs, they're getting mentors, they're learning things in class that are relevant to the pathway they're in. So we have two, we're redesigning two high schools right now. One's going to be redesigned around two pathways, one around communications, and another pathway around um, innovative technologies. And our other high school will be around business and finance. The first getting it right was that the first iteration of Youth Voice Project was the one that went out and did surveys of young people to find that gap, that that 20 to 24 
group was just not being serviced and we went to the Opportunity Youth Collaborative with recommendations for a drop-in center and for life coaches and that got implemented. That's the Connection Center that was from Young People's Research and Young People's Voices that led to the Connection Center that now serves young people. So there is work to be done and that young people are leading that work matters tremendously in Boston. Um, I want to add to the list of elements that we talked about, a couple that I think just emerged from this part of the conversation. First, there are cross-system processes that are emerging that are important. So when you think about success coaching, uh, when you think about some of the other work that we're doing, we're creating ways to work across systems and build some seamlessness. It's also about a few third spaces as well. And so the Connection Center is an example of a third space that doesn't sit squarely in some of our systems, but is necessary to provide glue and to provide something that doesn't exist in the ecosystem that will benefit young people. But I'd like you each to uh, tell us, what do you think the next evolution of collective impact work is in Boston if we're going to move progressively and swiftly towards some of our goals? And we'll start with you, man. Um, I, I think the key to what we do in Boston is just simple. So let's start from a student perspective um, and, 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 and then the conversations we have. It's really about, and this might sound corny, but it's really about just love. Just really, really understanding that people, young people, and people in general just want love. They want to be respected, you know, and they just want to be engaged in a respectful way. And so when I think of the, the next level, so for instance, uh, we said we cut the dropout rate in half. We know that this, the half that's left is this different than the first half. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be different conversations. It's going to be different people that need to be brought to the table. You know, so I just, I really wanted to, I, I guess, say that because I feel like that's something that people can bring back to their cities. It's really about, like, and, and I'm talking about even on a physical level, showing love, showing respect, and, and, and just having open conversations and taking off your title to make things happen. We've created the kind of the piping from K-12 to college. And in some, sec in some parts of our school district, we've created the piping from K-12 to career. But we don't have truly a system that guarantees the 4,500 young people that graduate or potentially can graduate from BPS every single year a pipeline from, from K-12 to some college to some sort of career. And there, is some, there are some prototypes of this. State Street's doing some interesting work with us. They're guaranteeing a thousand jobs for BPS students over the next five years. Let's create all these pipelines and let's get this right in the city of Boston because a place like Boston, an innovative economy like Boston, a place that so, has so many resources, so many colleges and universities, I think we can create a pipeline for our young people. I think the superintendent is a very wise man. It's, it's got to be all about jobs and we have a very special opportunity in this city and in this region because of the course the economy has taken and the course the labor market has taken. Uh, it is an incredibly tight labor market. It is going to be so for a very long time. We've got to forge the connections and some of them are already in place. Again, my favorite example of the Private Industry Council runs the, the, the very best private sector summer jobs program in the country and they've been doing that for for more than 30 years. It's incredible, but it, it needs to be built upon uh, to, to take a more comprehensive approach. So I think the collective impact approach could, uh, could get some big wins in the employment uh, area.